Chris Godinas, licensed professional counselor, also the host of We Need to Talk on every Sunday at noon, and then I post it up to Facebook, and then I do these videos on Wednesdays and answer questions. This video is for educational and informational purposes only. The views and opinions stated herein are mine and mine alone. They do not represent the ACA, the APA, or any other therapist for that matter. Boom. Shakalaka done. I would like to thank my sponsor, BetterHelp. B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P. BetterHelp. Dot com slash Chris Godinas. They are an online therapy company. They are international. So if you are anywhere in the world, you can get to a computer, you can fill out the questions, you can get into a therapist here in the United States of America. So they are awesome. They are master's level or PhD level. I've been getting really good feedback from them. That makes me very happy. So thank you. Betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinas. Okay, let's dive into the questions, shall we? Uh, okay. So isn't schizophrenia sometimes brought on by certain drugs? Yes, it can be. So, um, any drug can theoretically induce, uh, uh, psychopathy and, um, or, or not psychopathy, sorry. Um, brain so gone. Psychosis. There we go. <laughs> psychopathy, psychosis. So yeah, it can bring in psychosis. Uh, so it would be uh, a substance induced psychosis is what that would be called. So if there is a family history of schizophrenia or bipolar or things like that, you definitely want to check with your doctor before you do any microdosing or anything like that to make sure that there's not the possibility of, you know, psychosis. There is that possibility. Absolutely. Uh, schizophrenia itself in and of itself is not brought on by a drug. There can be um, instances of it being induced by being on a drug. But generally when people have schizophrenia, it is a brain malfunction. It is a, a there's something going wrong on the 23rd genome. And that 23rd genome gets toggled somehow, some way with uh, when the when the hormones hit usually onset of schizophrenia is between the ages of 13 and 28. You can have early onset, meaning you could be as young as six. You can have late onset. You could be as old as 50, you know? So um, it generally falls though when the hormones start hitting. So if there is any family history of schizophrenia, I would not take um, any hallucinogenics. I really wouldn't. Um, and cannabis can do that as well. Cannabis can induce, um, psychosis, any, any drug, basically, let's be clear. Any drug could induce psychosis, take it in high enough amounts. So, um, and if there's a family history of it, yeah, you definitely want to be very, 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 very careful about that. So there is that. Okay. Next question. Uh, why the narcissist just won't stop even after the relationship? My kid's father is still abusive, even with a new supply and kids with her. Okay, so narcissists are crazy, guys. You you got to wrap your head around. They do not think the way a healthy, normal person does. Healthy, normal person, relationship doesn't work out. You go, oh, okay, well, that didn't work out. Okay, and you move on. And you be a parent to your child and you be the best parent you can, even though you're not with the other person and you co-parent. Now, with a narcissist, there is no co-parenting. There's not even parallel parenting. It's gonna be undoing everything the narcissist does every single time those kids come back. So um, basically, narcissists don't stop because they're crazy. So with a dark triad, okay, you've got the narcissist, narcissistic, it's all about them. Psychopath, the rules don't apply to them, antisocial. So the rules don't apply to them. So they think that they can abuse, stalk, harm, hurt, and there will be absolutely no repercussions, okay? Machiavellian, control freak. So oftentimes what narcissists do is they will get a new supply, they will have kids with the new supply, but they will use you as the whipping post. They will continue back to the previous ex who left them, who got away from them, as the bad guy. Now, how this happens is the narcissist gets with either somebody who's disordered, a borderline, or another narcissist, and they both are focused in on you being the bad guy. 
So that's the worst case scenario, unfortunately. The best case scenario is the narcissist absolutely just moves on to a new family and leaves you and the kids alone. That would be the best case scenario. But and you're telling me it's the worst case scenario that they just don't stop. They just keep going and going and going. Well, it's a form of narcissistic supply for them. They're getting their jollies off of it. They do. That's why they continually test the bounds of whatever orders you have, you know, like custody orders or visitation orders or whatever. And they're constantly trying to change it. And they're constantly accusing you of not, you know, following the letter of the law, blah, blah, blah. And the reason of it is, is they would rather have an effed up dysfunctional relationship to somebody than no relationship at all. So they're terrified of not having a supply. And so what you've got to do is get the kids in therapy, number one, get yourself in therapy, number two, and any time there is an interaction with them, you absolutely do not respond to anything that does not have anything directly to do with either the divorce decree or the kids. Now, what I have seen these crazies do is they'll say it's about the divorce decree. But then if you read through it, you're like, this isn't about the divorce decree. And you just ignore it. You are legally under no obligation to respond unless it has to do with the kids or unless it has to directly to do with the divorce decree. So um, at some point it can be considered harassment. You know, if you can show that they're blowing up your phone or they're blowing up your email or they're stalking you or they're whatever, you know, and that's just what they do because they're, they're getting their jollies off of it. The more conflict there is, the more they know they're upsetting you, the happier they are, if you can even call it happiness, and the more they will continue to do that. So you've got to stop taking it personally. It's not personal. I know it feels personal. It is not personal. They would do this to literally anybody. And make yourself as unattractive a target as possible. So in other words, they love when the exes just blow up and respond back and, you know, and start defending themselves. That's what they're looking for. They want you to get on the ropes and start defending yourself. So when you're boxing with a narcissist, don't let them get you on the ropes. That's what they want. They want you to start defending yourself. And the second you start defending yourself, you've given up any advantage. So you don't owe them an explanation. You don't. You owe them goose egg, nothing. So you don't have to explain yourself, even if they demand that you explain yourself. It's like, oh, I'm not married to you. I don't know, you jack, you know? And you don't need to say that. You just don't answer. So what the narcissist will do is they will poke, 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 send these texts that are, you know, war and peace, long novels, um, send emails, same length. And somewhere in all of that mess, you've got to find that one line <laughs> that you need to respond to. This is why I love Susanna Quintana, because Susanna teaches people how to, or she'll even read the text for you and how to respond. And that's what you've got to get used to doing. You've got to stop allowing the inner child to run the show. The inner child is the one that jumps up and goes, but, but, but this isn't right. And I'm going to defend myself and I'm going to show you and I'm going to know. Stop. Stop, little one. Stop. It doesn't matter. They don't care. They're dedicated to you being wrong. So why give them any more fuel for their fire? You do not have to explain yourself. You do not owe anybody an explanation, period. So if they send you a novel, you find what has to do with the kids or whatever is relevant, answer that, do not answer anything else. And sit on it. Sit on it 24 hours. Don't immediately answer. If it's not an emergency, you're under no obligation to respond immediately. And this is the thing that narcissists do is they want an immediate response. I sent you a text. Why aren't you texting me? Because I got 24 hours to answer you, biatch. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. And that's what you got to get to. You got it. That fear response of oh, I've got to respond. No, you don't. No. Unless it's an emergency. Unless somebody is on fire or on the ground bleeding. I do not. And you just got to get to that point. But they want you to be in that constant fear state where you, you're like, oh, I've got to appease them. I've got, I've got to do this and they'll be happy. I've got to do that and they'll leave me alone. No, they'll leave you alone when you're no longer an attractive target. Meaning they're not being able to get their narcissistic supply off of you so easily. They want the upset. 
They want the sadness. Your tears are delicious to them. They are a-holes, okay? It's the nicest thing I can say for them. They're sadistic and they enjoy your suffering. Don't suffer for them. Don't. So when you're faced with and you've got the new supply that he's got kids with and everything else and he's still stop responding stop giving him that emotional response only respond to what's necessary do not take it personally find the humor in it gee i wonder what kind of crazy randy's gonna go on this week because they are get with a good therapist start working on this stuff because the, the less attractive you make yourself to a narcissist, meaning the less emotionally responsive you are to a narcissist, the less attractive you are to them. Because they live for that trauma. They live for that drama. They live for that upset. They live for that wanting to harm, wanting to hurt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I would, you know, I love Susanna Quintana. I, I strongly recommend her book, You're Still That Girl. She's been through it. She's been there. She's done that. She's a great life coach. I really, really love her. So, um, you know, give her a call. She's great. Um, you need to get in with a good therapist, though, if you're letting this stuff get to you. If they've already moved on, married somebody else, has kids with them, and they're still able to get your goat, that's when you need to really take a look at where are you getting hooked. And maybe this is where a, a therapist would come in. So, you know, where are you getting hooked? What is happening? How come this thing that they said is arr, hooking you and you're feeling some emotional response to it instead of feeling nothing? The opposite of love is not hate. Let's be clear. The opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is absolute indifference. Absolutely. Like, write me a text. Don't write me a text. I don't care care that's where you want to get that's where you want to get and unfortunately they will continue to do this as long as you somehow rise to the bait so stop rising to the bait when you start responding with nothing but answering whatever question is about the kids facts figures it's not going to be fun for them anymore right now it's a game for them so don't make it fun for them facts figures no emotion facts figures no emotion so that's what you want to do all right, kids, so uh, this Sunday I will be talking about the holidays, D-A-Z-Y, -E, uh, D-A-Z-Y, holidaysy. Um, so we'll be talking about that, how to deal with the different situations that come up, how to gray rock. We're going to review, 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 um, how to excuse yourself, how to take care of yourself, self-care, etc., of course, my first answer is always going to be don't go. If it's a toxic situation, don't go. But if you have to, then make sure that you're grounded. Make sure you're safe, you know, in your own personal space and make sure you have an exit. So we're going to talk about how to do all that. So, yeah. So next week is going to be about the holidays. In between, I will see you in Atlanta. Um, if you want to get tickets, they will be available up until about Friday afternoon, probably around noon. I'm going to cut it off on Friday and, um, it's for Atlanta. And as soon as you buy the ticket, I will send you the information on where it's going to be. Um, and I will see you for Saturday in Atlanta, which is awesome. And then Sunday I will be doing the holidays one, how to help get through the holiday. Yay. All right, guys, have a great week. And I will see those of you going to Atlanta in Atlanta. Talk to you later. Bye.